reaction. How bad was it, honey? Mm. <sighs> you know, Joe, I can't raise these kids alone. Cut. Bonnie is, there's not a person who's more enjoyable on set and not a person more loved by the crew. So when there's a problem with Bonnie, I assume it's a problem on our side not on her side. This is the first time in 10 years that I've gotten so paranoid halfway through a film going, am I just, what am I doing? Right. I'm not even thinking about it because I'm thinking makeup's taken care of it, lighting's taken care of it, the director's looking after me. Right. And then I realized nobody's really thinking about it. Right. And then I got scared. So, yeah. you know. Oh, I don't want to, well, and, and you know what, the, the, the record, problem is. I don't mind looking my age, I don't want to look 10 years older. The scene between Joe and Margaret in the bedroom, the problem was is that Bonnie knew the camera was going to be very close on her and she really wanted to make sure she looked right. Well, you know, you work with a filter or without a filter, but hopefully you have either lighting or a filter. <laughs> but when you go without either of them, you know, it's just uh, human nature. You know, they use them on everybody, even Affleck. I mean, he uses them. I mean, have you seen Ben Affleck in real life? He's, you can't tell the difference between him and Burt Reynolds. Gets a couple comments from actors, you know, could you, got some bags under my eyes, got some, you know, need to, you know, address this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, and this is where, from a visual standpoint, things got, got into a little bit of conflict. After the fourth day, when makeup and hair are like Bond, you know, maybe we should talk to him. He's like, oh, no, this is rough and dirty and fast and furious, <laughs> I said, over my dead body. Is this a Hollywood movie where everything's slick and glossy? Or is this a, you know, a reality sandwich where everything's raw, feels real, feels, you know, feels like, you know, these people are who they are? This is the inexperience and also the insensitivity. And you're going to think this is a BS line, but I think you're a beautiful woman. And so, I know, that's why I said the insensitivity and the inexperience. I think you look beautiful. I swear to God on everything. But you've not, I've never holy. seen you once look through the camera, and that's when you know what somebody looks like. I completely put the visuals of this movie in the hands of Pete Piaggi. I did it because I trusted him. And Pete put a lot of his eggs in, in, in Biagi's basket. I wish Pete was, was a little bit more stern and, and pull back on the reins at certain points. I could see where some would say, you know what, maybe I put too much trust in him. I disagree with those people. The only thing a, a DP really has to do is serve the story, and serve the director and producer. The, uh, and I, and to serve him, him or herself. Project Greenlight launched a competition for amateur filmmakers. After a lengthy selection process, Pete Jones, a struggling writer from Chicago, was chosen as the winner and given the chance to fulfill his dreams, directing a feature film based on his script. Chris Moore, Ben Affleck, and Matt Damon are producing it. Miramax Films has put up a $1 million budget and will release it in theaters. Now, Pete must direct his movie. This is Project Greenlight. Okay, let's rehearse it. Very quiet, please. Quick rehearsal, then we'll shoot. How many lights are still working on? Our four biggest. So it's 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 another, when you call it, it's still another hour, yeah? Making the day is tough because we got to get a three-page emotional scene in before lunch. That's a really hard thing to do. I mean, on most films, you know, three pages is a big day. On this film, three pages is our morning. Is that a huge lighting setup? No, right. not at all. That's not, not at all. OK. Keeping it simple. I, I want to try to make the day. All right. Hippiaji's taken in the house in two different sets so far, three different sets. He's taken about three hours to light each one of those sets. Six hours of lighting over how many hours of shooting? It's ridiculous. I'm really concerned about making the day. Yeah, we're going to make this day. The, the resource they were fighting over was time. Time to direct or versus time to light, set up, you know, get the visuals perfect. They come up here and I catch them right about the, uh, closer. Very quiet, right please. Ladies and gentlemen, very quiet, please. Take your time. It's a 66 take one. Take two. Take three. Take four. Take five. We have to. I know I can do it. If my dad saw me with you again, I would be grounded to infinity. No. My, if my parents knew I was here, Cut! 
seeing 66 take number two. Isn't, well, you told me about the... Cut! Cut, cut. All right, reset it again and hit the pipe, please. You want to know the truth? Wait. You no, uh, even no. though you didn't say it. Cut! Do it, uh, do it a little bit earlier as you're looking out the door. You don't go to the door alone. You never go to the door alone. Because the door is shut. Action! We gotta complete the decathlon. Okay. Cut! And the kids, they didn't have their lines, you know, completely. You know, once we started rolling, it was like, what's going on? You know, I thought they had their lines. I don't want them to be too rehearsed. I don't want them to know their lines too well, so it almost looks as if it's coming to them as they speak. I, I usually don't work that way. I mean, I've been working with this, this age for eight years. So if they don't have their lines, you can't work with them in the first place. Lee is a really nice lady, but uh, I don't really rely too much on what she does. Maybe that's a fault of mine. But I know what I want from the kids, and so I'm going to work with them. One last time. Peter? Action. I should be grounded to infinity. This was the worst take ever. I know. I was gonna, I we're going to have a bad day. I think what I'm realizing halfway through this thing is anytime I've got scenes alone with Pete and Danny, very, very I'm dangerous. losing time out the ass. Yes. Um, Those scenes are really tough. Yeah. I just can't get the two of them where I need them to be in the time we need them to be. Just the, the issues that you should think about. The lighting setup in this thing this morning took forever. It's kind of a catch-22, something that I've had to learn to deal with, is it takes a long time to light things. And that takes away from my uh, time to work with the actors, so the performances are right there. OK, that's a wrap. <clears throat> we didn't make the day, and we didn't make the day. And we should have made the day. I, I feel like where we went wrong, it just took a lot longer to light. Oh. We should have had the kids come later. It took a lot longer to light than we thought. That was, just, it was a bad, but that was just, we got screwed on the estimate, and the, we need to give the kids more time. It's hard. There's always a tug of war in a production. Like, what do we value? What is more important than something else? It was my feeling that too much emphasis was placed on the visuals. They blew the lighting estimate, absolutely, OK? But uh, by an hour and a half. You're not necessarily using the your resources in the best way. You're really focusing on these little details. You're lighting for four hours when you really should be, in a scene with the children, you really should be concentrating on the kids. You, you, you gotta get them, you gotta capture them, you gotta have the visuals to support what you're doing. No, right, no, but please, yeah, uh, tell me everything, every, every note you got on that. So the editor I found to be incredibly useful during this part of it, because he's looking at everything we shoot and telling me, Pete, this works, this doesn't work. Pete, you've got to watch this and make sure that this actor doesn't do this anymore. What was missing in the performance for me, and, and, and again, I'm going to be honest with you about uh, Please, yeah, that's, I need that. The, you know, what's missing in the performance for me is the fact that these guys are actually talking with each other that you're hearing these ideas and thoughts for the first time. Right. You have two kids who are not experienced dramatic actors. You have a first-time director. Uh, and you have a very tight schedule. You put all this together, and the scenes might not play as well as they possibly could. One of the things that they need to work on is the art of listening to one another. You're right. You're so right. Just speaking their lines and waiting to speak their next line listening to what the other guy is saying and processing it. And, and I think it might help you with performance levels. Okay. I would like to see certain scenes reshot. So I certainly think we adjust our priorities a little bit so the material is going to be uh, much more credible. It's a beautifully shot movie. And I think Biagi and I have developed a style. But i got to get the performance. I've got to get the story. Uh, the, the lighting from here on out. Oh, listen, oh, lighting's gonna go as fast as we can go. Listen, what it comes down to, Biage, last night, you know, I had to get 
my performance that I didn't get. I can't be waiting on on uh, yeah. lighting like we were two days ago. You know, what we need is basically, we need to be done with, with this scene by lunch. Sounds good, let's do it. Then, but I mean, that's not lunch. just sounds good, that's what we gotta do. Right, okay, so here, here's the other thing. Then what you yeah. also need from me, let's have a little communication. Really, I need from you what's the easiest, best way to do it, and then we figure out from there. Okay. You know what I mean? You'll get it. I'm not saying every day I get better, but every day I learn. Um, and the director that I was when I started, you know, uh, doesn't compare in my eyes to the director I've become. The rest of this movie, I just want to say this out loud, the rest of this movie... You're all fired. No, we will probably be putting the cart in front that. of the horse and lighting a scene that we haven't even seen a rehearsal for, all right? I'm sorry, what now? We will be lighting a scene... The wrong way. way. I think that's gonna become the modus operandi because I think what we wanna do is set ourselves up for a fall. Okay, so, great. but I'll take that hit. Okay. Cause... Oh, I'm sure we'll take it together. <laughs> Very good, all right. So anyhow... The, do the... I detect sarcasm there? No, no, I just, no, it's not directed at you. It's just directed at the nature of the beast here. to be right about here. Conversation going instead of this tough guy routine, you know? It's, oh, it's part of the job. Can't reload. We got it all. Cut! What was that? So if I'm gonna change up, I'm not just gonna drift down because the editor might use it. So I go like this and then I settle in on it. That's like, I have to do it. So it was a bad composition. Yaji's shaking the camera to ruin the shot because he wasn't happy with the composition. Uh, I don't think that's normal. So, uh, do you want me to push in and go uh, tighter and just keep on aiding, but it'll be a, two, a tighter two shot? I mean, yeah. we're not seeing the emotion. I mean, it just feels intimate, and we're not intimate with the camera there. Let's, let's get in there tighter. Okay, there we go. Yeah. And we're not talking about, you know, a horribly composed shot. We're talking about a fairly minor um, change in the in the composition. I remember there were like two lamp. There was one lamp in the shot, and he wanted. He changed to get both lamps, I think, in the shot. You maybe learn some sly dog tricks to protecting the visuals so that they can get through. And I, this is how I learned it, that if you're coming down from a shot and you're panning and, and you miss it, you miss the composition, don't, don't do the little subtle reframe to get it. Because if the editor uses that, it just looks like crap. So. So what you do is you go <laughs> like this, and then you lock in to the right composition, so that way the editor can't do it. So effectively, you're doing the, you're sticking your thumb in the shot. Shaking the camera is a pretty aggressive move. That's sort of a statement saying, I so don't trust the rest of you people making this movie that I got to protect myself. So I'm going to shake the camera so there's no question that this shot never makes it in the movie. You don't want anyone to say that you don't want anyone to say Pete Biaggi's trying to make his reel on this. No, no, you know, no, no. I, I don't believe that. <laughs> no, but no. you don't want someone else to say that. Anyone. No one right. said that. Right. But you don't right. want someone to say it's at the risk of the movie. The DP um, were to be, you know, doing it for his reel. That means that um, he's sort of pulling resources towards him to make the most beautiful shot. Now, at the end of the day, it ends up screwing other parts of the production uh, for his own sake. It could have been the greatest performance in the world, and Pete could have been absolutely in love with it, and it's ultimately the director's decision. What Biagi was doing was he was taking that decision for himself. The trick always with a first-time director and, a, and then an experienced director of photography is, if you're not careful, sometimes the director of photography ends up directing the film. I wish somebody had pointed it out to Biagi that he is getting the chance to sort of pick a lot of what the shots are and a lot of what's going on, and he should take that seriously, that he is having more of a director role. That means that he's also responsible for making sure that Pete has the options and the things that he needs when he gets in the editing room. 
The next couple of days I'm really concerned about is the beach, because that's a big deal, the beach, and kids swimming in the water and all that kind of stuff is scary, and, and we got to make sure we do it right. This is the pinnacle of the movie. If this scene doesn't cut together, nothing after it's going to make any sense. So they have to have this. Jonesy and I felt like the beach might be one of the easiest days of shooting, and we didn't approach it with a lot of uh, preconceptions about what was going to happen. We haven't settled it yet, but we hope to have a uh, crane shot so when Michael Weinberg as Danny turns and finally finishes the decathlon and touches that buoy, when he turns to float on his back, we're overhead and we're catching it. Our guys are going to have to build scaffolding in the water because they want to have the camera approximately 12 feet above the water line. And then it's going to have a 30-foot arm on it, a uh, jimmy jib arm. That shit's heavy. <laughs> it's going to take a while. The scaffolding and the shot over them in the water uh, and all the sort of intricacies of what Pete and Pete, you know, Biagi and Jones wanted to do, I thought was crazy. I don't think you're gonna be able to get your overhead shot. I haven't told Biagi yet. Why? Wow. Visually, I'll be very disappointed if I can't get that shot the way I want to get it. Jonesy and I talked about it. We couldn't picture it any other way. I don't want to sacrifice any art or anything like that, but and I love the, I love the, the um, scaffolding and the jimmy jib. A six-foot ladder will do the same job. A lot of times you feel defeated when everything is called into question, when uh, a number of people come up to you and ask, can we, can we do this, that, and the other thing? There's a little contention as to whether we're shooting things in the right order. Um, we're saving some stuff for the end of the day, for, for magic hour, for sundown, that I'm hearing from some people in the crew is not such a great idea. What is magic hour? To you. I mean, when do you want, if sunsets at 8.30, which that's what it is roughly, what time do you want to be squeezing that shot, those overhead shots off? 8.30 to 9.30. 8.30 to 9.30. So why aren't we taking advantage of shooting the overheads earlier in the day? Originally, we wanted Ron to shoot it at uh, dawn when there's a purplish light coming up before the sun has even come up. Right. And we sold that, we sold our cine cinemagraphic soul to just do it at dusk now because that's the only time we probably could do it. Okay, so well, I'll tell you this. We want to do it By the time dusk. you get all the camera gear out there and you get everything set up, even if it's totally ready to go, you're maybe going to get two or three shots off before it's too dark. And that's all we need. Well, you know, swinging that camera around, everything's going to be a rigmarole because you're not close to shore, you're not close to the equipment. It's not going to be fast. Nothing's going to be fast about shooting that overhead shot. That's good, because we don't want it fast, because that's uh, that's the height of the movie, and we're willing to get those but, three overhead but aren't, shots. aren't all the other shots at dusk also? There's three other shots, yeah, with a different camera. The beach is going to be a mess. There's no way around that. You what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid I want to hear, I'm afraid that, that kid's not gonna get in that water once. He's gonna put his foot in and he's gonna go, oh my god, I'm not getting in. That's what I'm afraid of. Maybe I'm gonna be in for a huge shock, but I believe everyone's overestimated the beach. And I've got a pretty confident idea of what's gonna happen, and I think we're gonna be perfectly fine. We're gonna dunk these kids into a lake. This is not Los Angeles, this is not Miami. We're dunking these kids into a lake, a cold 50 degree lake. Honestly, Pete, when we get here, I'm gonna be the guy that's like, fuck it, throw him back in the water. He's like, I don't wanna go. I'm right. gonna be throwing back in there. How bad is it? Mike would like to go see it, just so he's not so anxious, because he thinks it's the perfect storm or something. Oh, no. I never saw Lake Michigan before. I never put my foot in the water. I'm from Los Angeles. We vacation in the Bahamas or Florida, so we're used to warm water. I like the swimming pools where you can cook pasta in them. They got to be hot. So Lake Michigan, when they're telling me how cold this is, I was really concerned. As it is, we get complaints when the air conditioning goes down for 30 seconds. So <laughs> let's talk about dunking kids in 50 degree water and telling them to swim and act. Tell you the truth, uh, uh, you know, Michael, Michael couldn't swim. He really couldn't swim. Adi really couldn't swim. Try one. 
one time to do your hand. Whoa! Oh my god, like I'm filling up the board. What? Why can't so many fathers get nervous? He gets tired. He just hasn't had enough training and consistently done it enough to be, you know, he would never make it half a lap before. Everyone seems to feel the need to express the opinion of it's very difficult for the kids to swim in this water and it's very cold as if I'm some heartless bastard who for the last 13 days has been whipping people you know and been maniacal establishing shot which wasn't on the thing but was on the wish list mm -hmm. why are we starting out with the wish list why don't we start off with the shots that are in the movie this rig that we're building is just out of control with the, the scaffolding and the jimmy jib jib and the you know 30 foot boom we want to have that up around three o'clock the jimmy jib build no and problem. the camera it's gonna take me and my four guys all day you know until that point yeah. in time but i can have it done this way Ron and the, the grips and the, those guys, they were in there in their scuba gear and laying down metal and cranes and all that shit out in the water. I mean, they must have felt like, you know, guys on oil rigs. First shot is an establishing shot, Kelly. Uh -huh. Establishing shot of the beach. I love this bullhorn, I love it. The night before this day of shooting, uh, Biagi uh, and Pete Jones, I think, or just Biagi, had sort of indicated we have a number of shots we're thinking about doing with the D by himself. We prepared to shoot coverage of a D for a couple hours before Mike Weinberg arrived. We get to the beach, and we're, the first thing that we're told is that there's no shots that we can get with just a D. Well, it just happened to be that day, our kids needed to be sharing the same space. So, changes already. OK, let's go see what shots we can't get off today. You know, by then, people should have learned to trust each other. They should have understood and been able to say, OK, if, if the DP and the director tell me there's stuff to shoot, then there's stuff to shoot. We have a D early. I, there's nothing we can do with a D. Both OK, I'm just guys. saying that no, you guys, I, I you guys said can... the other night that we could. I think Bruce, the first AD, was the most on the money and knew exactly what was going on. And I'm amazed that guy didn't quit. I mean, we scheduled the day based on you guys say, whatever, you guys can find stuff to shoot with uh, a D right. here. That's why we brought in sound. That's why we brought in camera. That's why we brought in all these people. Otherwise, I would have made call time at 1130. Things that were we talked about were going to be this way were completely different ways. So we can either sit on our ass for a couple hours, or we can put a D in the water and have a D do his swimming stuff first up. That was pretty frustrating because we didn't have any of our safety people there. There was a lot of concern and, and well, there should have been, you know, uh, but a lot of, you know, as a, as a person on a film, you go, let's just jump in and do it. But you know, it's a child. Why did this happen? I don't understand. It happens every day. They change what they want to shoot. They say one thing and then they change it. The kids are standing We don't there. have safety people here. Mm -hmm. I, use, I was, I'm a certified lifeguard. I mean, it's uh, probably. Are you really? Yeah, probably. What's it called? Expired. So we get an since I haven't lifeguarded since I was 21. You have to understand, putting kids in water is a really stressful thing. I know, I know you're saying, gee, it's two feet deep and all right. that kind of stuff, but I'm telling you. It was just an intense pressure cooker, just a tremendous amount of stress. We've made all these plans. All this and other things we could have done. We could have gotten the double here and shot the double. I got in Pete's face. I was giving him shit, and, and you know, he was upset about it, and frankly, I, I, you know, I didn't really care. You agree that there was bad communication between you and Biagi and the entire rest of the production, including when people are going to arrive, people not knowing, no. you know, led to believe one thing, that we were going to have shots that we could get for the first of the day. That's the piece of communication yeah. that the, the simple fact of there are no shots with the D ever except for him swimming was never communicated. Well, I, I just felt that at that point in time, 21 days into it, I've got a track record. Get off my back. People have been having lots of meetings and planning and everything like that. 
And then we get this, and we're just sort of like, all right, we'll, we'll spend Well, we're getting a one. shot that's due tomorrow. We're getting it today before we even start the day. So the frustration, take it for whatever you want. I, I, I will. I know you will. I don't give a fuck. He was pissed off. I assure you, I was more pissed off at him than he was at me. We knew we had so much work to do, and we had to get it done so quickly. And hanging in the background was this terrifying idea that we were going to put the kid in the water. Let's get it in the water. Hey, What if it's cold? Well, how am I going to do this? And let's roll south. I was like, oh my god. This is the end of me. I was afraid going into that that we weren't going to get anything. Oh. One second. Action! Oh. 